Hello everyone, welcome to Break in the Huddle. I'm excited about being with you today. Uh, I want to talk to you about the preeminence of Christ. And that word literally means surpassing all others. Not in a way that we're better than anybody else. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about we as individuals surpassing anything that we thought we could possibly could be in Christ. In other words, I am not satisfied. I am not even close to being satisfied with who I am in Christ. And so I hope you'll be encouraged by uh, this little quick time that we have here together, breaking the huddle. Before I get into that, let me just say this, the East Ham unit is coming up just around the corner. It will be an awesome weekend, men. And uh, that will be on March the 23rd that you'll be able to walk in and go cell to cell. And, uh, but that closes to be able to register on March the 4th. So between now and March the 4th, please, please, please come. Uh, it's a special place. Our, our tent will be high in the air there and uh, uh, hopeful in Jesus' name we'll have good weather for the tent. If not, we'll move it inside the gym. But it, no matter what, weather will not stop us. I promise you that. But uh, you're the backbone of this ministry and we would so love to have you come and be a part. And then again, on April the 13th, we're in the Boyd unit underneath our tent. Once again, that's just from Houston, straight down 45, hang left at Fairfield few miles, the prison's on your left. An uh, incredible chaplain there, uh, as along with the warden, the leadership there. They cannot wait to have us. And uh, they've actually called me and asked me if I would personally come between now and the time that we actually have our tent in the air, our weekend. That again, uh, the Boyd unit is April the 13th. Uh, and uh, the registration will close March the 25th for that particular unit. So uh, men, we can't do without you. So uh, please come and join us. Uh, and uh, we'll be so thankful for that. And please this, at this time, don't forget to, uh, to like and to share this video with all your friends and your family, whoever you can think of. You never know, as the old saying goes, one word from God can change a person's life forever. And uh, this ministry is found guilty at doing that. So. Uh, let's get into what I want to just share real quick here about the preeminence of Christ. I'm talking about Colossians uh, chapter 1. And in verse 9 it says this, For this reason we also, since the day we heard this good news, we do not cease, this is Paul here speaking of course, we do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you be filled with all knowledge of his will and in all wisdom, spiritual understanding. And so we, to become that people of preeminence, we just surpass anything that we could even think imaginable with our walk with God. And, and how, how wonderful is when people look at you and look at me, will they be able to say, something different about that person there. He's just not the norm. And I think when we hunger and thirst for this preeminence, this, this beyond what we could think or imagine, we surpass anything. You know, that's what I wanted to do as an NFL player. I wanted to get to the NFL. That was the ultimate when it comes to numbers and figures and the percentage of a kid making the NFL, basically is next to none. But I got blessed, I was able to do it. How much more, how much more do I wanna be everything that I can possibly be for my Lord and for my Savior? And uh, I say it all the time, the only thing you and I can take with us to heaven is people. That's all that we can take with us. Let me turn my volume down here on this thing. And so again, for this very reason, since this day we heard, we do not cease to pray for you. We don't, a step that helps us to this preeminence is that we are people, we do not stop praying. 
We pray for God's will in our life. He doesn't answer, I don't think, to a need. I think he answers to our faith. Putting our faith out there. Faith is going out on the limb. That's where the fruit is. And so we are people that, in Jesus' name, we will not stop praying. We will cease not to not to, but we will keep praying for God to be everything in us. Personal revival first. And then, of course, for our loved ones, our spouse, our family, our friends, always lifting them up. I just had a dear friend that just called me and he didn't get a good doctor's report. And uh, I let him know that every day I'm calling his name out. But now this is how I pray. Once with a genuine heart, I prayed for that disease that the doctors have now told him that's in his body. I fervently prayed and rebuked that spirit, that disease. And now from that point on, because I prayed it in faith, now I will not cease praying for him, but my prayer is a prayer of praise. God, I thank you for healing my friend. Maybe the evidence is not there today, but Lord, I prayed it in faith and I thank you. I'm not going to go over and over and over. Oh God, pray for my friend. You know, heal him, heal him, Lord, heal him. Wait, wait a minute. It's all about faith. In speaking the words and I spoke it as strong as I could. In Jesus' name, he is healed. And now I will not cease praying, lifting him up, thanking God that he's going to touch his body and he's going to heal his body. Amen? Some of the things that we pray for, we pray for knowledge of his will. That's another thing we can pray for. Not my will be done, but his will be done where? On earth as it is in heaven. You see, heaven's got to start here on earth. If you want to get to that heaven, it better start right here. So we pray for knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Verse 10 says this, that we may walk worthy of the Lord. This is another thing that we pray for. Lord, let my walk speak louder than anything I could ever say verbally. I say a lot of different things through the years, but I don't think there's very much of any of something that comes out of my mouth that is more important than this part of my prayer. That I may walk worthy of the Lord. You see, that's preeminence focused. It's not about me. I want to go beyond everything that I can do. And I believe it starts with my walk. The second thing, fully pleasing Him. That's all I care about. I want to please him because if I please him, I'm going to please my beautiful wife at all times. I'm going to please my children, my grandkids, my dear friends that I have. Every time I walk into a prison, uh, it's going to be good. Why? My walk is about him. And I fully want to please him. In other words, no hidden agenda. We're talking about the preeminence of Christ in us, surpassing anything we could think of. Fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work. Being fruitful in every good work. So bottom line, anything I put my hands to, does it glorify the world or does it glorify him? That's what this is talking about. Being fruitful in every good work. And so if we want this preeminence of Christ, you and I, we must, our walk, our talk, everything that we put our hands to. Let's say you, walk, you work at a, I don't know, for the city, you, walk, you work at a mall, you work for a company, you, maybe you work for another ministry. The whole deal of what I'm talking about here is every step that you make, every movement that you make, everything that comes out of your mouth, okay, is pleasing to him. 
because it's catching. Because if you have some of the same people basically around you quite often, you're preaching to them through your body language. They see there's something different. And so I'm here to tell you, soul winning is not optional. If you love Jesus, if you're called to, 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 with all your heart and that your heart's desire is to serve him, then you are in full-time ministry. Being ordained, to be honest with you, don't mean a rats. It don't. And I say rats. Don't mean it. We're all, if we want this preeminence of Christ, we are all in full-time ministry. And our sole purpose, as the Bible says, he who wins souls is wise. And I want to be found wise in Jesus' name. Another thing that we pray for, increasing in knowledge. I'm not satisfied with where I am. I want more and more and more of this word in my life. I will never be content. I will never be fully satisfied whatsoever. So for increasing in the knowledge of God, verse 11, strengthen with all might. That means fellowship. You can't be strengthened in the Lord living life by yourself. What does that mean? You can't be strengthened in the Lord if all you do, quite frankly, is watch Christian television. You need fellowship. You need to go to a church. You need to get involved in church. And God will show you the right church if you're not involved. He will. Now, I get it. Maybe you're in a part of the neck of woods where there ain't anything close by. I get that, okay? I, 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 I understand that. But knowing your heart, you've done your best to find that church that can feed you, love on you, fellowship you, with you because you get strength in that, okay? But I get it. If it's just not there, Mike, and I understand that. I, I lived in a certain area for a number of years of my life. There just wasn't anything close by. And I had to depend on it. But what I did do, I put extra effort and to the friends that I knew to make more time for fellowship with them because I needed to strengthen myself. I hope this is make a sense, making sense. According to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering, uh, suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Lord. This is another point, verse 12, Colossians uh, chapter 1. Basically, we're going uh, 9 through 12, maybe 13. It, says, it also says, giving thanks to the Lord. We never stop giving thanks to our Heavenly Father, who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in His light, to be partakers. Verse 13 says this, one of the greatest scriptures in all the Bible. He has delivered us from the power of darkness, and transformed us into the kingdom of his beloved son. What an amazing verse of scripture. He has delivered us. Those of you that are in Christ, not of Christ, but in Christ. He has delivered us from the power of darkness, transformed us into the kingdom of the son of God. You talk about preeminence of Christ. That's it. He is the in invisible God, the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth. Visible and invisible, verse 15. Let me close out this time here. Verse 17 says this, and he is before all things. He is before all things. There's no way you can come even close to the preeminence of Christ if he, Christ, is not before all things in your life. Lord, is this a good ideal or is this a God ideal? The difference between a good ideal and a God ideal is one too many O's. And he'll always give you the immediate answer because you know deep inside if you're truly in Christ. He's before all things and in him all things consist, all things owed together in Jesus' name. Last scripture, and he is the head of the body, the church, 
who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all these things that we've just talked about, that he may have the preeminence, there's that word in the New King James translation, he, that he may be the preeminence of all things. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Let the preeminence of Christ be your goal. Surpassing anything, your relationship with Jesus Christ that you could ever imagine. In Jesus' name. Hey, I hope this blessed you. It blessed me as I shared it with you. Three things. In real estate, it's location, location, loco location. In this ministry here, we love you, we love you, we love you. And we thank God for you. Uh, you're making a difference by your prayers, supporting us um, financially. We can't thank you enough. 2018 was an amazing year. And 2019 is already off to even a greater start. And it's because of our partners. Again, share this program with your likes, with all your friends, etc. Be a part of the Mike Barber Ministries. Don't cease praying for us. In Jesus' name. Check us out on our website, mikebarber.org. Until next week, I'll see you. Love you. Bye-bye.